Hey, Jim Parquet here with VPX Baseball, and today we're going to start lesson one on how to fix premature hip rotation, right? The first aspect of this is understanding why your hips are not working in sync with your upper half. And realistically, that's how you should define it. It's not really that you are prematurely rotating your hips. It's that your hips are rotating out of sync based upon the timing of your arm slot, your head, and how it's driving down slope. Um, in order to maximize the ultimate goal, which is to have support down here at release point, right? As soon as support leaves, then I have to get sideways or do too many different things in order to execute a proper pitch. And obviously we know things will crumble at that point, right? So your premature hip rotation is again, a, a, a result of a lot of things back here being out of sync, your kinetic chain reaction and that kind of stuff. So check out our other videos on the proper delivery and the components to it to fully understand what we're talking about here. But bottom line is this, I've got to make sure that I'm in a good starting position, which, which for us pitchers is the leg kick, my loadout is proper, and that my head is over my back hip moving into foot strike, right? So on this, premature hip rotation would be your hips are rotating too early, leaving your arm back here, which then decreases extension, increases drag arm, your support is not there, and potentially you're exposing yourself more to the knife rather than um, keeping yourself out of the doctor's office, right? So how do I get my hips to make sure that they are synced with how my arm moves and where my release point is, which would then lock up the support and keep it underneath you when you're ready to throw, okay? So I'm gonna show you a few things on what it should look like here. We're just gonna, I'm not fully warm, but I'm just gonna kind of walk you through how your hips should look based upon your release, right? Our release should be at least somewhere in here to out front. This right here where people are talking about eccentric, that doesn't happen, okay? We're not out here but it's somewhere in this position right in here that we're gonna have our release point because as I move down, my support's gonna be there, right? But I'm just gonna kind of warm up. And what I'm gonna do is try to find that happy place in my delivery to where I'm feeling support down here that is propping my upper half up so that I can really unlock what, what my potential is in my arm, right? That feels like I'm back. And I know that because I'm feeling too much stress on my arm right there. A little better. And what I'm doing is I'm moving my back hip underneath me later. That feels real good right there, okay? So I'm gonna lock that in for you all. That still feels good, okay? One more time, okay? And I'm pretty much hitting my spot of low and away right now. Where it's at, okay? So what I'm feeling is my back hip moving with my arm. Therefore, what it does is it keeps me linear and my hips start rotating at the right time in order to notice. As I rotate, it brings my arm back, which is the layback in your arm to go forward. But if I'm too far, then obviously this is not athletic, right? So I gotta be here, and then it rotates to create the layback. This is kind of where we want, right? And obviously, if we're going in fast motion, see how my hip opens up, and then I create layback in my arm, right here to here. It lays back, right? And then it's kind of like an iron mic machine. Boom, it goes forward, right? Guys who throw harder obviously have bigger layback, right? And as you're moving down, this is obviously gonna increase and uh, get through the zone properly so that you can create that proper leverage change. And that's your release point, right? Is really the leverage change. Where will that be? Because you don't actually say, I'm gonna release it right here. It's more of a leverage change and then the ball comes out, okay? So when you're doing this, what I would start to really kind of see where your leverage change and layback should be, where it feels comfortable, where you're not stressing or overstressing your arm, is just get the baseball in your hand because you have to have that Put it where you feel like you come down, right? For me, I'm gonna be about right in here, okay? This feels good. And then I'm gonna just kind of play with it, right? To feel that 
back hip, notice my back hip is moving underneath to create lay back and then it goes, right? Now then play with it also to where you get too far out front, right? And then this obviously is not good because as you can see the side view, if I get too far or prematurely rotate, right? Prematurely rotate, it gets the ball sideways and back, which then our fingers are underneath and around the baseball, which obviously we know is wrong. Check out our other videos on how to throw a fastball properly, the different pitches, and you'll start to see that your fingers need to be on top and over the baseball, right? That's essentially why we're trying to fix your premature hip rotation by bringing it back into sync with everything else, right? So the number one thing that's causing this is that you have a lower half that moves too quick compared to the upper half. There's an aspect to it to where, think about this, your lower half, mine right here, four, five, six. I'm about right here, I'm six of these. That's where I always did it when I get onto a big league mound. I would go six of those feet and then I'd draw a line. That's where I land every single time. I'm trying to hit that because that is optimizing the length that my lower half has to travel from leg kick to load out, right? Because we're gonna drop and then we're gonna drive and hopefully I end up in that area, okay? If I can hit that every single time, then what I've done is given my body neurologically an opportunity to understand how quickly my arm should travel, where the arm slot should end up, how it should be created in order to be successful so that when I get all the way out here, boom, right, all the way out here, my arm, I can rotate my hips in connection and sync with the upper half to keep support here and then get that good layback. Not overextended, not underextended, but the good, that sweet spot so that when the ball comes out, sound, it feels like, like a rifle's just been shot out of your fingers, okay? So, since your lower half has that portion to go, right, you'd be a little different or maybe a little more, whatever, but you find that. Then you gotta think, your arm's gotta travel, right? If you're a short arm guy, it's gotta be here all the way out. I'm a long arm guy because most, most guys who throw velo are down, right? So watch my arm stroke here. It comes down first and then goes. So I'm going down, right? Which is what you see on TV pretty much every day. You see most guys like this. There's a reason for it, right? We've got other videos on that, but basically this is it. Now, my arm needs to travel from here all the way to here it's a long ways compared to from here to here so what causes premature hip rotation as we stated before it's a out of sync lower half that moves too quick compared to the distance your upper half has to travel all you've got to do is sync them up that's basically it and you will have properly moving hips right so that would be step one. We'll go into that a little more as we get through in all of this, but basically that's what you're trying to accomplish. The second aspect of that is after you get all of that sync together, then you've got to be linear, okay? Meaning directional, not getting out and around, right? And there's a lot of components that go into that. And then the third portion, which is really important here, is making sure that my head doesn't get out front. As soon as my head gets out front, I've got to use my arm. I will subconsciously throw this anchor and start to use it. It's kind of like an on switch. Once my head moves at the target at all, where it's actually consciously being moved, not being moved with the lower half, but I'm actually moving it, the arm will be used no matter what, and therefore you're basically pot committed, right? So it would look like this. This is my normal, okay? Here's my sink right here. All right, stumbled a little there, sniper got me, but again, here's my sink. One more time so you can see how the arm and the lower half move together. Okay. Here's out of sink, watch my head, okay? Watch my head, I'm gonna use it as I move into my loadout here. You can see how my arm automatically comes up. I'm not trying to chicken arm it, it just does because this is my normal, boom that sinks up with the lower half so that my hips when I land are closed. And if I move my head just a little, 
it's going to become unseen. Watch again. I don't even, I feel like I don't even have time to bring my arm down, right? That's where it feels comfortable, okay? And as you can see, I start getting sideways because I'm too early. Got to go this way. Because for every action, right? For every action, there should be an equal and opposite reaction. But since there's nothing there and I have to come up, what's the reaction? Side plank. That's just simple science, right? Premature hip rotation, on goes the story. So, in review, we want to make sure that we are optimizing support down in the end. Your premature hip rotation really is just basically a, a sink deficiency, right? Where your lower half is either too fast or too slow based upon your upper half, right? And then we have to make sure that we're not using our head, so then therefore we have to be quicker here or short shortcut it, right? So there's a bunch of components that go into it. You're gonna watch this, this lesson plan and hopefully it'll help you out. But bottom line is keep your support down and it should look like this right here. Okay? That's where we should be one more time. Same thing. There it is. Okay? Hopefully you like this video. Check out our other ones. We got a full line of products to get you the big ones.